A strengthening jet stream and a clash of air masses next week with a strong cold front could spell an outbreak of severe weather for parts of the Midwest and the Deep South. This includes strong gusty winds and the possibility of tornadoes. We'll take a deep dive coming your way next. Welcome back, my fellow other nerds, to the channel. I'm your host, Greg Majeski, making a difference one subscriber at a time. And before we get going, I always like to thank my subscribers. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see with this report, please consider subscribing. Just hit the subscribe button, the notification bell for alerts on future content, and uh, leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, hey, we're talking about a potential for some severe weather going into next week. And I've got the map up here showing what we typically see in the month of March. Now, March, obviously, we get uh, active weather here, especially across the southeast, especially. You see kind of the cluster there. But you can still get the storms and tornadoes into parts of the Midwest and even out into California. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look what we may be seeing as we hit it next week. So let's get to it. So there are several mechanisms that I look at when I'm looking for the potential for any kind of severe weather event across the United States. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is the jet stream. What's the configuration of the jet stream and what kind of jet energy, wind energy is available to, for the support of severe thunderstorms? The next thing I look at is wind shear. And when we're talking wind shear, we're talking about winds that change with height, that gives, adds that spin and obviously you can set up the, the support of strong thunderstorms that could lead to potential tornadoes. And then the next thing I look at is what kind of anomaly are we talking about as far as the differences in the air masses. We're talking about the warm moist air clashing with the cold uh, dry air. So what's that extreme in there? And then what's the lifting mechanism? What's the trigger? So in this case, we're talking about a strong cold front that'll be coming down uh, as we head into next week. So first up, we're gonna be taking a look at the jet stream that's about 30,000 feet up. So let me go ahead and zip on out here. This is the Euro latest European model. And we're gonna start on Sunday and go into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. That is the target days of my concern for the way it's looking currently. Now, obviously you see a very active subtropical jet stream. Got a big trough coming here off the eastern seaboard. Uh, there's a low pressure here that's just off the California coast. We have some energy uh, in the polar part of the jet stream up here to the north uh, that's going to be diving down toward the south. So you've got a couple pieces of energy that are going to kind of bump into each other. This piece of energy coming here off the California coast into the southwest and this one to the north is going to be diving down out of Canada into the high plains. So let's go ahead and, and progress this forward into time here and watch as we watch that energy come in off the California coast and it kind of bumps into that energy going into Tuesday uh, going into areas of the south central plains. So again, you've got the energy diving here to the south. You have this energy kind of diving in here from the south and west. So that is uh, showing uh, some very strong wind energy. See the yellows in there, that's getting over 140 knots there, some very strong winds. And a little bit of what we call divergence kind of setting up in here as well. And that's when the air is kind of separating. That adds to the, the spin of the atmosphere as we go through the day on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we're going to start initially down here to the south. And then this is going to kind of move up here toward the Midwest and kind of drag across the southeast as this cold front moves on in. So watch as we go throughout the day on Tuesdays. Some very strong winds through there, especially late in the day. You can kind of see, again, that split taking place as we come into areas of Missouri and into Arkansas as far as the jet stream is concerned. And this, this kind of progresses heading into Wednesday morning as it pushes into the Midwest. Uh, again, you've got that jet energy here, the jet energy from the Southwest making the turn through there. So a very potent uh, cold front that'll be moving through that part of the country as we go into early Wednesday morning. And then finally kind of flattens out and moves on off the Eastern seaboard as we go into Wednesday night. So we're talking about a Tuesday, Wednesday potential for severe weather uh, going into the 27th through the 29th, into that time window right now as it's looking right now. So that's what the jet stream's looking like. Let's go ahead and shift over and take a look at wind shear. So we're gonna take a closer look here on the European across the continent of the United States, focusing on the amount and available of wind shear. And what we're gonna be watching here closely on Tuesday is you're gonna notice the amount of available wind shear increasing here across this portion of the country. Uh, again, as you've got the trough deepening here, subtropical blowing in this way, and that's gonna feed the, the development of thunderstorms and potential for uh, tornadoes with this spin. Now I've seen 
greater events. But this is looking very healthy here. You notice the, the reds there picking up across Illinois, stretching across areas of Kentucky, uh, stretching back toward Texas and Louisiana. It really gets strong going into Wednesday morning. I guess the only lacking component here is just how warm will it be. Uh, we are in late February, getting ready to go into March, and uh, th that's probably the only mechanism maybe in question a little bit is how much available latent heat is going to be there. The dynamics are definitely there, but uh, the heating component is, uh, is something that I'll, I'll be looking at as well. So you notice as we go through the day on Wednesday, this pushes off toward the east, probably dragging a squall line, and we'll be watching for those individual supercells that could develop out ahead of that squall line as it clears the southeast, and then the trough really flattens out by late in the day on Wednesday, and then progresses off to the northeast as we go into Thursday. So Tuesday and Wednesday, again, are going to be the main concern as I back this up. Again, going into Tuesday morning, starting across Texas in areas of Oklahoma, going into uh, areas off toward the east as we go into the Midwest, and then dragging uh, some strong thunderstorms potentially across the southeast as the storm system exits going late in the day on Wednesday. So we know we've got some jet energy. We know we've got some, definitely got some wind shear with this system. Let's go ahead and see about the any potential anomalies above as far as the clashes of the air masses in the atmosphere. So this illustration here is showing the 500 millibar height anomalies map. And okay, when you have the warming, that's typically when you get high pressure, that's the reds, that's when things are kind of calm. The, the blues are the indicative of, of crashing heights or negative heights, and it's usually associated with the colder, the colder air in the atmosphere at the 500 millibar level. So what we're gonna be watching is this energy here is gonna get absorbed with this trough that's gonna be diving down here out of Canada. As, as this moves down to the south, this is gonna get absorbed in this, warmer mild air is going to get pushed off toward the east uh, as we progress from Sunday and into Tuesday and Wednesday. So let's go ahead and watch this closely again. As you see the energy kind of get absorbed into that trough, you see the trough digging out west and you see it kind of rising there in the east. So we've got a strong cold front that's moving on through. You see the warmer air surging out ahead of this. You see the colder air kind of surging on the back side of this uh, with this system as the heights crash. And it'll be late in the day on Tuesday when it appears to be at its strongest, okay? So things will be deteriorating on Tuesday, getting to its strongest late in the day on Tuesday and into Wednesday. But watch what happens as we go through the day on Wednesday, okay? We start to push this out and then the trough kind of flattens out. So. What that's telling me is we go in throughout the day on Wednesday, the system should be weakening, the storm should be weak in a weakening phase by Wednesday afternoon as that front exits the eastern seaboard uh, as we go through the day on heading into Thursday. So again, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it's the overnight period on Tuesday going into Wednesday morning when the storms could potentially be at their strongest before we see things start to slowly begin to improve. So switching over here to the temperatures across the continental United States, you can easily see where this cold front is. I mean, a very sharp dividing line right through Wisconsin's coming back over toward Oklahoma here, northern portion of Oklahoma, as we have temperatures here in the 70s out ahead of this. Some very cold air. Look at the temperatures there on the high plains in the teens as these air masses are going to play bumper cars as we get that warm, moist air coming in out of the Pacific and coming in across areas of the south central United States and into the Midwest. We're going to, again, the area of concern is going to be sitting right through here uh, with those storms as we go forward in the time. You can see the very sharp dividing line as that cold front settles to the south. So we got uh, very warm moist air out ahead of it, cold air up behind it, and some pretty good wind shear as that starts to exit and begins to move off as we head into Thursday morning. So by the time we get Thursday, things have obviously settled down and have cleared out once again. So we're going to switch over to the precipitation. We're going to track this uh, very closely as we head in, coming into this upcoming weekend. So we're going to start here on Sunday, uh, looking very quiet from coast to coast for this upcoming weekend. All right. But as we go into Monday and Tuesday, watching that energy, here's that energy from the northwest coming in from, from the south, coming in here. And here is the energy off the California coast that will be diving and coming in this way, coming into the southwest. So this moving this come into to Arizona, this diving out of Washington State and into the Intermountain region as we go through the day on Monday into Tuesday. And right now it looks like it's going to be late in the day on Tuesday on this latest run. Again, we're still about six, seven days away, so keep that in mind. This is going to change some, and timing is going to be critical. This could obviously change, but I want to give you a heads up here on the system. Tuesday, not looking bad other than some snows across areas of Colorado and areas of, of New Mexico and Arizona as we go into Tuesday morning, but then we're going to watch this area right in here as we go forward 
into throughout the day on Tuesday is that warm moist air and that cold air kind of clash boom there's the thunderstorms flaring up late in the day on Tuesday so about six seven eight o'clock you're seeing storms here from areas of Michigan stretching all the way back in toward Oklahoma with a pretty good squall line and then what we watch is the potential for supercells to kind of be out ahead of it that's where you can kind of get some spin out ahead of it as we've already seen with the wind shear out ahead of the storm system so it uh, looks like a rough night across areas from Ohio stretching back toward Kentucky into Arkansas uh, with the potential for some strong severe thunderstorms and isolated tornadoes going in to Tuesday night and Wednesday and I always hate nighttime tornadoes to say the least so if you don't have a weather radio highly advise that you go ahead and get one and then it looks like the the we'll hit the high water mark here on Wednesday morning as it's stretching from areas of Pennsylvania uh, coming down into the deep south into Mississippi with the squall line with showers and thunderstorms and after that because what we were showing you with the jet energy kind of lifting off toward the north, things should begin to settle down. So kind of a, a decreasing threat across areas of New England. we still got some storms here across areas of Carolina, stretching back into Alabama and Georgia throughout the day on Wednesday. But the trend is for it to be weakening as the front should be exiting the eastern seaboard as we go Wednesday night into Thursday, going from the 28th and into the 29th. So it appears that February is trying to go out like a bit like a lion. Of course, March, things really start to get ratcheted up as we see the increased activity for severe weather, especially across areas of the southeast and south central portions of the United States. And I'll continue to watch this next storm system for next week. So if you do want to get updates on this storm system, uh, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That way you're alerted when I do new updates, if there's been any changes. And I do appreciate the feedback. Any kind of comments that you have, uh, things you like, things you don't like, things you'd like to see, uh, please post that down below. I do appreciate the feedback as I try to build the best weather product possible here in the YouTube universe. All right, that's your latest update for now. You guys take it easy. We'll see you on the next edition. Until then, be good, be safe, and uh, we'll see you on the next update. Bye-bye for now.